let's see it's good weather i'm rested breakfast was yummy we don't have any appointments today bugaboo's sleeping well crud i don't think i'm gonna be able to make any good excuses for not working on the equipment today <laughs> enough that nope what about this one nope well I guess we'll check on it again in another day it's a tiny bit of diesel and a little bit a little a little more gasoline um so it's gonna be pretty loud so probably close that door That's not a reason to go to the car wash. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely need a longer hose because like, that's like standing next to a compressor and trying to have a conversation. Bugaboo would appreciate if we did this at 2 a.m. when he's not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Bugaboo? If you're watching this video, it's payback, buddy. It's payback. <laughs> this is like our version of your lungs. Um, yeah, so I think probably start with the backhoe and uh, see what happens. <laughs> Ready to do this? I think. I think so. Ready or not, we're doing it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look at you, dirt monkey! I'm so dirty. 
I just caved. Oh. I just like laid under the backhoe in the dirt. Yeah. I'm like, it's why fight it. Look at that grease. Oh like, yeah. Grease everywhere. Mm. Better wear black. Well, welcome to equipment washing. <laughs> that was enjoyable. It's satisfying. It's therapeutic. Yep. I can't even see like something in my eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. Is there something in my eyebrow? Yeah. You're a little dirty, head, head to toe. <laughs> Well, that needed to be done hardcore. We've got some hydraulic leaks and other things that are just impossible to diagnose. And uh, two years ago, when I crawled under this thing to work on some other stuff, I noticed that at some point in its past, someone had literally painted over uh, grease and dirt. <laughs> so it looked great. If you just give it a quick one second glance, you're like, hey, that's, that's good stuff. And then you wash it all off and you're like, oh, there's a backhoe under there. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. That's gonna make doing my work today a little easier. And I think overall it's going to make the backhoe run better. So yep. part of equipment ownership life. Right. It's pretty early, but these guys are already starting to try to nest yeah, in the backhoe. Are. Gonna have to work on that. Gonna have to send a strong message to shoo. It's good news. It's a lot easier with a hot washer. Yeah, nothing rocks. <laughs> so if you guys don't already know, two things. One, you're never going to drive your backhoe to the car wash because it's just inconvenient. It's a long ways to go and backhoes aren't very fast. Two. If you do, you'll never be invited back to <laughs> yeah. town. You will be shot at the car wash as you pour all of your grease, <laughs> which in this case, our backhoe's pretty clean, honestly. Most machines coming out of the woods are pretty nasty. They just keep pouring oil in the top and oil keeps coming out the bottom and nobody really cares. But this one wasn't too bad. But yeah, if you take a greasy machine to the car wash, <laughs> you will get run out of the car wash and then out of town. So it's nice to be able to do this at home. The hot washer is gonna be imperative with taking care of all of our own equipment. So I've been texting our good friend who's a case mechanic for quite some time because this problem has me dumbfounded and it's been a particular annoyance, especially when we're kind of in a hurry, but I think it's just part of having a good running piece of equipment. The clutch switch on the loader arm seems to just stop working after the backhoe has been sitting for a period of time. And so you come out, you hop on, you fire it up and, 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 and it doesn't go. And yep. you sit there for 20 minutes trying to get it to go. And it took me probably six months to narrow it down to an electrical issue. So we finally got that figured out. I've got it narrowed down right about where the problem is. Only it's not obvious how to fix it. So I've been texting our friend Chad. He's a, he's a great guy. He's always, Chad, I love you, man. Like, I don't know why you help us, but thank you for your help. Uh, so here we are digging into this thing. We've got a few small projects to do. We're trying to get geared up, kind of ready for work season, get everything in good repair, get everything tuned up and running good. And some of this stuff has actually been an issue for a year or more, just not urgent. So today we're tackling these problems. Here's kind of a simple project mm -hmm. if you wanna, if you're not just already all fed up with this whole backhoe thing. Um, I mean, you're already dirty, so Might don't, as well don't go going. inside. <laughs> These steps have just a few bolts that hold them on. Oh. And you can see that this step's They're even loose. loose. Gotcha. So the other one, we actually lost a bolt at some point in its life. And so now it's becoming bent and we've got the bolt to repair it. But if you want to track down a, a wrench and wrench. yeah, get these tightened up, that way we don't lose one on this one too. And of course it'll extend its life. That would be really helpful. That's okay. a pretty simple task. And, okay, and then I'll keep working on this gremlin. So uh, I found out something that I didn't realize that totally makes sense from talking with Chad. There's this little red rubber thing and it kind of fits right here. And this is a clutch switch. So if you want to use RPM to speed up the hydraulic, say to lift the bucket or dump the bucket, you can simply push this button and now the drive is disengaged on the, the backhoe so that you can use the engine to control the loader. Well, the problem is if this switch is malfunctioning or this circuit's malfunctioning, the loader won't go anywhere. It doesn't matter if you put it in drive or reverse or any combination thereof, nothing happens. It's a clutch circuit. There's actually one right here on the shifter too that you would use. So this would be like in a car with a manual transmission pushing the clutch lever in, except it's a button. Well, Chad informed me that this cute little red piece of rubber actually used to be a button cover and it actually was covering this, this button because this button is not waterproof. It's not sealed. And that really explains where this problem is originating. It took us forever to narrow it down to this doggone button. It took us forever to narrow it down to an electrical issue. Anyway, we've got it sorted out. What I'm not sure of is whether it's actually the switch or not because there's more parts to this. So that's kind of the situation with this. This is probably the biggest issue. We've got a couple other functional cosmetic things to tune up, a bolt to install, and I have a hunch 
based on my history with this machine, this is gonna take most of the day. Oh, man, it's gonna be quite the witch hunt. Feels like I'm tearing the whole dash apart to replace a switch. The problem is my manual doesn't really tell me like how this all comes apart. It just gives me the wiring schematic. Those people that work on equipment kind of know this feeling, especially when it's a new piece. It's a bit of a witch hunt to figure something out and I guess the tragedy is you're probably not gonna do it twice. So I think I'll keep tearing into this stuff and if I find a spot where it makes sense, I'll check back in. What the heck is that? Treat of the day. What the heck is it? Peeper Oreo smoothie. <laughs> wow. I haven't even got any work done yet and I'm already getting treats. I've uh, been making milk kefir and we got some new grains. Wow. And it's making milk kefir like crazy. That's really good. My mm. justification for the Oreos, we're drinking nothing but like crazy good probiotics. <laughs> yeah, it's like drinking heaven and then you just put a little bit of fun in there. Just a little bit of fun. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. I think that one nails it. And it feels, it tastes good because it's cold on a hot day. Mm-hmm, yep. It's not even hot yet, but it's hot, you know what I mean? Yep. Mm, thanks. Part of the reason we time lapse is so they don't hear too many adult words. Right. That's ridiculous, seriously. Who builds this stuff? So we finally figured it out after reaching into the deep bowels of our backhoe. So there's the, we hope, is the culprit, and I guess this is the easiest place to start. I bought a new switch, so we'll throw the new switch on there. What we can do is, and it's so finicky, because like right now it's working. Yeah, so we'll put a new switch on there. But you're eliminating the problem. Right, so we'll put a new switch on there, and if it works, and it never becomes a problem again, yeah, we know it's a switch. switch. But I think we should take Chad's advice and buy this little boot for both yep. of these switches, since they're not waterproof and uh, maybe that'll prevent it in the future. Let's see, I probably should take a photo of that <clears throat> so I know how it goes together, even though it's a simple, simple switch. Oh wow, <laughs> some little tiny terminals and stuff. Ooh wee. Well, I'll be doggone, look at that. I think I realized when I ordered this stuff that there was actually a boot, so I think I already ordered that one. Ha, huh, funny, got smart. But I don't have the boot for that one, so. Looks right. Man, that's a tiny screw. Boy, oh boy. Delicate little thing. All right, I'm ready to go back together. So if Look you could just kind of help that through, I'll pull from the other end. We just need to get it down to where it's kind of nested in there and then I'll screw it in with the- Okay, so you just want me to work it down? Yeah, I'm gonna pull. Okay. I'm gonna pull the other end. You won't be able to push it through. Okay. Going in. Going in, hold your breath. Oh, I'm a little bigger nose. after that yummy Oreo. Great, right, it's pretty jigger. good. I feel so healthy, I should have another one. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, cool, well, so then this, the handle screws the rest of the way. Yeah, <laughs> there's a connector down there in the bowels of this yep. thing that's going to be really difficult. Wow. Camera off? <laughs> yeah. Camera off, guys. Okay, night night. We'll see you in a minute. Well, guys, after fighting this, I was able to reach around, and it turns out there was probably about four, maybe four to six inches more wire hooked on something down kind of in the guts back there. And, and this, Kind of just speaks to why doing this stuff one time is so inefficient, but at the same time, I think we find a lot of pleasure in it. So the good news is we're making headway and, and there we go. And then we've got this little boot. How about that? Should we see if it works <laughs> before we go put everything back together? <laughs> that solved the problem. I think it's tempting that while we have this whole thing torn apart to give that a bath kind of behind the console. I agree. And I agree. A lot of just hydraulic fluid and stuff yep. down there so 
Did you clean up yet? No. Perfect. I looked in the mirror, it looks like I have just dark freckles everywhere. <laughs> it looks like somebody just peeled out and you just stood there and you took it. Just stood there and just... took it, yep. <laughs> Yes, this project is done. So we'll put it back together and then we'll tackle some of the other stuff that we had to do. Beautiful. Like always, right? It's really hard to get apart and pretty easy to put back together. Well, that's not always right, but this time, thankfully it was. Kind of reminds me when you go somewhere for the first time, it feels like it takes forever to get there, but the trip home's pretty short. Of course, we don't know if we've ultimately eliminated the problem, but this is correct. This is the way it should be, so that feels good. New switch, new boot. Just looking at the wire, I don't think it's chafed on the inside, although I guess there's that possibility. And of course, there's that possibility that the solenoid that controls this whole clutch operation is actually bad. But one thing at a time, right? Start with what's easy. Got a few other kind of small little projects. Alyssa already worked on the other step. These kind of step attachments that contain the battery and the other side's a toolbox. They've got four bolts that hold them here to the main chassis rail. And I noticed last winter when I stepped on this, it had a lot of give and I thought, oh, that's not right. Sure enough, we're missing this bolt and there's a square nut that goes back there. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy fun. It's gonna fall through there a million times. I can just predict it now, but once that's on there, step will be nice and sturdy, and it looks like we've already bent it, so I may have to get a little ingenuitive to figure out how to get that back where it belongs. Perfect. I think that's gonna do the trick. Oh yeah. You know, all that dirt in there might actually be helping me. Unless I push it all out, then it won't be helping me. So there's a bunch of dirt back there now. <laughs> there we go. Come on, first try. First try would be awesome. Oh yeah, that'll do. I think we're in, guys. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that went a lot better than I thought. <laughs> I figured that stupid square nut would just fall down in that C channel about 50 times. That's way more stout. Awesome. I knew when we bought this backhoe that we were looking for something in this, this family of brand and make and model because of this. I have found with this machine, and I'm a little worried that with those machines, my luck has run out, that there's fantastic parts diagrams available for free. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get parts. They're pretty affordable. They're a little hard to come by, uh, some stuff, but it can be found. And I think that speaks a lot when you buy a piece of equipment, really think forward to when things break. It's not a matter of if, more like when. Even on a high quality machine, of course this thing isn't exactly new, it's right at 30 years old. But having access to the parts, I feel like makes it possible to take care of your equipment. And I'm not sure that some of the cheaper brands allow that. I guess I don't really know. It kind of brings me to the next project. And this one, I actually had to go to, no, actually I did get this from the same supplier, but I thought I was gonna have to go to eBay. Oof, you know you're getting desperate when you start scouring kind of used parts, salvage parts. Um, and it's such a little thing, but I believe it's gonna ultimately make a big difference in the longevity of the machine.
This little cover, which seems cosmetic, but it actually covers the primary fuse block. Water and snow and things like that have been getting in there. Not fantastic. In fact, one of the fuses burn out <laughs> while I was working on the trench to bring power to the property or to the house. And I had a pretty good little fire going down here. It's almost like it just shorted around between the fuse so that the fuse didn't actually even do its job. So I looked high and low and lo and behold, I found the proper updated fuse cover. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. And uh, this, this thing is so simple, it's embarrassing. There's not really, not really a lot of work to do here. It's just a matter of putting it together. So this clips onto something. Uh oh, maybe this is more complicated than I thought. Oh, I see. Yep, there you go. So that's how you know it's unlocked and locked. Well, let's see if it works. Oh, nice. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! No more exploding fuses because of rain. You know, I'm kind of embarrassed I didn't do that a long time ago. I think I looked and didn't find one, and I'm glad we found one. Where'd you go? Just went and tornadoed through the garden. <laughs> Maybe I can share what yeah, I did. Yeah, I think, I think it's worth sharing. Okay. <laughs> so guys, Alyssa just, honest to tr honest truth, she's just walking by the garden and like, like a black just hole. sucked Suck her right in. in. I don't know. I'm kind of leery of going over there. I don't know if I want to get sucked in. I'm not done with this project. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, let's go look. I'm excited to All see right. what you found. You right now? Yeah, let's go look. Look at these little guys. Spring is here, guys. It's here. So my first find, I'm pretty dang sure these are all the green onions oh. that didn't come up from last year. <laughs> Tell me those aren't green onions. Those totally are. They're perfectly in a row. Yep. That's not a weed. That's and something And that worries we me because this means stuff's growing. So now I want to like get more well, seeds started, but. Guys, there's two kinds of people, two kinds of gardeners. There's the gardeners <laughs> that put their seeds in the ground early. And then there's the people who actually get a garden. There's people, there's patient gardeners and non-patient <laughs> gardeners. There's, yeah, there's gardeners that get a harvest and then there's everybody else. And I think we're all non-patient. <laughs> oh, prone. everybody's trying to make spring come. So these are the chives. These overwintered. Those survived like three feet right? of frost. Isn't that crazy? How's that even possible? But I didn't know that they would come back. So I planted to put a bunch of lettuce here. So we might have to plant the lettuce around the chives. But this makes me really happy. Wow, those don't even look like they went away. They look know, like they right? were just like, boy, they're growing like fast. They're gonna get so huge. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. so before winter, I put down a bunch of horse manure. Yeah. It wasn't super fresh. Yep. I'd say it was pretty aged. Yep. Um, but I was kind of worried that it wasn't gonna like decompose Decomp, yep. by the time we want to put stuff in the ground. And then all winter, I've been putting our food scraps in here. So you can see all the eggs and stuff. I just accidentally started churning the whole thing. <laughs> And I turned it all in. So I feel Beautiful. like it looks better. I... And if you smell it, it smells more like soil than anything else. Mm -hmm. Look at that. There's all sorts of little insects crawling in here, which is a really good sign. That's so what you want. You want live soil, and it's yeah. alive. I found sawdust at the sawmill, by the way. Yep. There's a pretty good haul, and it's nice. definitely plenty to put in here. Yeah. For sure. We can mix that in, and it'll get out of the way of the sawmill, which will be nice. We might have our first garden project, bigger project, coming up in oh, a few days. We'll oh, see. We'll, we'll pay attention to the weather, but <laughs> I'm so ready. We have had too much good weather for the last, like, three weeks, guys. Like, all of our snow, gone. And so now, every gardener out there is just, like, chomping at the bit to get their stuff in yep. the ground. But it's not time. I mean, we have seven weeks. No, it's, yeah, it's April. Two months. About two months until you're in the clear. Two months, so don't so, just just hang on a minute. Just hang on a minute. Yeah, <laughs> we got lots of stuff to do. Let's get ready but for spring. But it's good. I think the idea yeah. is to be completely ready for gardening season, yep. which is where I want to be. And there's still a little bit of work to be done, but we're oh, in yeah. a lot better position than we were last year. And guys, our water system is working. If you haven't already noticed, we pressure washed today. That would not have happened at all in the last three years. So we're very excited to have lots of water on the property. We still got some bugs to work out, but we're making progress. And I don't think you're going to be conservative with the water this year. Would you agree? I'll try. So we got this thing washed. We got the loader arm switch fixed, fixed the stairs removed, on both sides. Removed yellow jacket nests. 
We're up fourth? to three, four. We didn't get the fourth one out there. We should do that. And we got the fuse box cover replaced. I need to look at my list, but I know there's one more little part that I can fix right now. And then I think we're basically down to greasing the living snot out of this thing, which thanks to a subscriber who sent us this cordless grease gun. Grease gun. It's is, easy. It's kind of fun. Well, it looks like it really wouldn't hurt to clean down in there too. Lots of nasty going on down there. A oh, little pressure in there, which is good. Uh, it's full. It's not overflowing, so that's also good. So this cap is the coolant reservoir cap, and it's cracked. And my sister threw some tape on there, which was fantastic, which kind of got us up and going. And I ordered a new one. Now that's a nice one. It fits. Nice, it does. Perfect. I think little repairs like this where it's really just a matter of doing a little bit of research and spending a few bucks, they just make sense. I mean, it doesn't even take any mechanical skill really at all to do these things. And yet when they're broken, you know, it definitely has an effect on, I think more your mindset, maybe not so much the functioning of the equipment. I don't think a cracked coolant reservoir cap is gonna hurt the machine much really. I did look at my receipt though. And would you believe this? That cap, 40 bucks. 40 bucks! And that little cover for the fuse box was almost $60. I guess for the people who've been around airplanes, you get it. And I think with equipment, a lot of this stuff is the same way. You know, if you buy a factory part, which is what these are, these are factory original parts, man, you pay a lot. But look, look how easily everything fit. The switch, perfect. The little thing, perfect. So I, I guess there's something to be said for that. How much is your time worth? I've certainly spent plenty of money myself on things that were aftermarket or not factory. And well, a lot of times they don't fit or they don't quite fit right. And I don't know what's worse, a part that doesn't quite fit or just doesn't fit at all. I remember last year I was plowing down the driveway and the throttle gave up on me. And I, I popped the hood and it was this tiny little uh, ball joint fitting had broken off or had failed anyway, the little ball in it had failed. And I thought, geez, I'm, I'm really in for a lot of money right now. And of course my backhoe stuck at the bottom of the driveway and the, and the driveway's not plowed and all these problems, right? I went down to the hardware store and this little guy I think was $4 and they had the exact part in stock. I brought it home, threw it on there and we were up and running in about five minutes. So for everything on this backhoe that is factory original it seems like kind of in the wear parts and in the engine especially they're very standardized and i think that's a huge asset i, th I think i remember the alternator we were having problems with long story short if you haven't seen that video give it a watch it was a witch hunt in its own and it came down to a light bulb but we thought it was the alternator and i thought for sure here we go we're going to spend several hundred bucks on a, on an alternator from case it turns out it's a very standard alternator they had one at the parts store i think it was 40 bucks these things will make or break ownership of a piece of equipment if, if it's down downtime will cost you more than practically any part
Well guys, we didn't get as much done today as I thought we would, but I have to say this feels good. I don't know why, I'm just, I'm not a mechanical person. So if you're watching this and you feel like I have no idea what's going on, uh, I'm with you there. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not one of those people that just gets mechanical things. But through this journey, Alyssa and I have both challenged ourselves to step up, step out of our comfort zone, and try things that we're not good at. It's scary and it's frustrating. And sure, we're not as fast as other people, we're not as good. But we definitely have both developed skills that we didn't have when we started on this journey. I mean, it's almost embarrassing how few skills we had when we started, but here we are. So I wanted to share just kind of this, this experience today because I wanna challenge people out there who are not mechanically inclined to just try. Uh, this backhoe is obviously a big machine and it's got a lot of electronics and hydraulics and it's a very powerful machine, but I think learning on smaller things, like maybe you have a bicycle or a lawnmower or something like that, try and learn how to take care of it. Maybe learn how to oil your chain on your bicycle so it doesn't squeak so much. Or learn how to sharpen the blade on your lawnmower. And over time, you'll find yourself getting more and more confident. And for me, the more I work on this backhoe, the more I get to know kind of how it works. Of course, when I move to a different machine, I'm probably gonna be completely lost because they're just all very unique. But the more I challenge myself to learn and try, I find myself trying more. This type of problem here, I avoided this probably for two years, partly because I tried a little bit and it wasn't obvious how to solve the problem. And so I just ignored it. And over time, it just became more and more and more annoying. There's some stuff on that backhoe that's not done yet that, again, I have no clue what to do. We've got some hydraulics that are kind of droopy, things like that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to figure it out. So anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. We have a super busy work season ahead. We have been kind of head down with a lot of the planning stuff on the house. Um, we were so busy working for the last two years that really we stopped planning because it wasn't necessary to get into the house. And to take a, a little bit of our own advice, we've slowed down and kind of gone back to the drawing board and we'll be talking more about that in future videos. But one of the things we've learned is that when it's time to work, it's time to work, not time to fix things that are broken. And so taking the time now, while we're kind of in that limbo season where it's frozen in the mornings and, and we could get snow and things like that, to get ahead on tools, get ahead on these projects, so that when we're in peak work season, we're not battling downtime or other issues. It feels good. 